The Cork man is aiming to achieve a new record when he flies from Ireland to Africa on a craft that's powered by little more than a lawnmower engine. Oshin Cray will become the first person to deploy a paramotor for a journey, journey that will take him from Ireland through Wales, England, France and Spain before arriving in his final destination in North Africa. He hopes the trip will raise funds for and awareness of the work of the International Development Agency, Gertha Self-Help Africa. And he's in our Cork studio. Oshin, good morning. Good morning, Rachel. Hi. What's a paramotor? Well, a paramotor is a, it's a, a small motorised um, craft where you use a paraglider that's very much the same as the type of paraglider you see people gliding in in the mountains, a sort of a parachute. And then you have a motor mounted on a kind of a rucksack frame on your back. And um, once you take to flight, the actual rucksack becomes like a little seat. So you're sitting in an armchair gliding along under your paraglider. So that's what it looks like. Yeah. So it has a big uh, propeller on the back in a cage. So it has uh, that gives you your thrust. So you the motor just gives you the lift to keep you traveling over. You don't need to be in the mountains or you don't need much lift. You provide your own lift by your little motor on the back. So why are you doing this? Well, it's an, uh, I've been paramotoring now, I'd say, for about 10 years. Uh, it's a sport that I was just flying with a friend over the weekend and we just kept saying to each other, I have no idea why everybody isn't doing this. <laughs> when you get <laughs> the weather... I have to say, it's it's, it does sound very appealing, all right. But well, you're, you're going rather, or you plan on going rather a long distance. I am, yeah. yeah. I was going to say that when you... I, I always think of people like sitting at the window in a plane when it takes off and lands, you'd love paramotoring because you're flying at a low speed and... You don't need to go too high and so you can take in the scenery as you travel. So I suppose I, I've always been interested and for me, there gets you get to a point where um, we, I've travelled overseas a little bit. I've been in, in the States flying and I've been in Spain and Portugal and France before. So the idea of doing one long trip, uh, it's a bit of a commitment and there are all sorts of uh, associated kind of challenges. But it's something I've been thinking of doing for a long time. And I suppose what inspired this trip was... I gave a little bit of support uh, as a skipper to two friends of mine, Manus um, Collins and David Burns, who were doing this uh, swim around Ireland, um, which they hope to complete now this year. Our Manus will be hitting the water in June again. And David works with uh, Goethe, uh, South Africa. So we had been thinking about doing something together. I'd been interested in doing a long trip and I just have always been impressed with the work of Goethe and just getting a bit more familiar with it through the contact with David. I just think it's probably part of the sustainable solution to the problem we're facing in in the Mediterranean in the last couple of years, really. All going well, then. When will your journey begin? Well, I hope to take off in August. I've left it as vague as that because if I go too much earlier, the days are just too warm as you go down through France and Spain. So I hope to be passing down through France and Spain in September, really but then trying to get the best of the weather in the UK where it's going to be very similar to here, unpredictable. And it's very weather dependent. So, and also what I'll be doing then is sometime from the beginning of August on, as soon as there's a high pressure system or a kind of settled weather pattern, I will hit the road and I'll be gone. But could the heat become a problem as you travel down through Europe? Mainly the problem with heat is you get, uh, as the air warms up during the day, you get a lot of thermal activity, which means flying becomes very bumpy and rough. And it's more unpleasant than dangerous, but it makes progress difficult as well if the winds pick up. As you talk about possible danger, is this legal? It is, yeah. No, and I've been working very closely with the Aviation Authority in Ireland and with their contacts over in the UK and I've been in contact with uh, the North African and with Morocco and in Spain as well. Now the sport is relatively new so the the kind of there is no sort of streamlined kind of legislation across all the countries at the moment um, so you have to try and work your way through them but generally speaking once you have a permit to fly in the country of origin and you have insurance and you have your medicals and all that in order uh, it's not that complicated. Are you hoping then that individual people will sponsor you or, you or are you hoping that a big sponsor will come on board? Well, I, the trip is entirely self-funded, so all of the funds raised go directly to Goethe. Uh, they've helped me set up a page where it's been linked on the website. And uh, I'm certainly, uh, the. it would be nice to see, uh, I suppose, part of this is about the awareness of the work that mm-hmm. Goethe are doing in light of all the activity, as say, in the Mediterranean in the last year or two. It's kind of sometimes it gets a bit, dis- there's a bit of distraction from the work, the good work of supporting basic r- ground roots, farm mm-hmm. support and help. The, uh, the Goethe principle of helping people up rather than giving them a handout is something that just appeals to me. So they offer nothing free except... 
uh, accept knowledge, expertise, and then they, the funds are used to, to support that effort with staff in all of the countries they work in and also to support sending out basic uh, f- uh, grain and livestock and getting helping people get going. Mm-hmm. They, they have, there is a, there's a, um, a capacity to increase production significantly locally in Africa right. with the right kind of help. Well, listen, we're going to have to leave it at that for this morning, but I have a feeling we'll be returning to you over the course of the summer to see how <laughs> things are going. Oshin, thanks a million for joining us. That Thank was Oshin Cray. Okay. 752.